Hi, I'm Maria from the Meridian Library District, and I am really excited to join you today for Tween Create. It was a lot of fun to see the wonderful things that Kathleen was making on her videos, and I'm really excited to show you today one of the things that I love to create. And I wanted to show you today how to create one of my favorites, origami frogs. Now, I like to make origami frogs that can actually hop. I like to make them big, and I like to make them small. I like to compare and contrast and see which one does better flips and which one goes further. And sometimes I even like to have contests to see who can make the, an origami frog that goes the furthest. Now, a little history about origami. Origami is two words in Japan, in Japanese, that are squeezed together. Oru to fold and kami paper. Paper was first invented in China in 105 AD and brought to Japan by monks in the 6th century. Because the monks brought it over, paper tended to be more used for religious purposes. But when it became more and more available and more and more affordable to buy paper, more people were using paper to, for other things, such as making origami. Now, origami, the first origami written instructions were in 1797. And usually, origami was passed person to person, orally, and through demonstration. Spain also did some origami. They started in the 12th century when the Moors brought it over to them, and it was focused on mathematics and percentages on folding and specific mathematical equations that went into making a beautiful piece of work completely just from paper. Origami is designed based on you don't cut it, you don't rip the paper, you just fold it, you don't use glue, it is entirely a square piece of paper that is folded to make something unique, such as a hopping frog, or a crane, or some other beautiful creation like a flower. Now, more modern origami is patterns that are designed to, and they focus on the puzzle aspect of origami. So there's lots of books now. It started in the 1950s making a lot of origami books that were published that show you how to do folding patterns. Akira Yoshizawa developed the system of showing how to fold origami in just such a way to make it easier to put it into a book. And these are became more popular and more common in the 1950s and are still being published and enjoyed today. So making origami, a lot of people start with origami paper, but when I make origami frogs, which are my favorite thing to make with origami, I usually don't have origami paper around, so I usually start from a regular piece of paper, just like this. So I wanted to show you what it's like to start with just a regular piece of paper, so you don't have to buy the origami paper from a craft store or even online. It's really easy to get origami paper, but I like doing it from regular paper for something like this, because I think it even it's fun and I don't have to wait to buy paper now, I did cut off the fringe of this paper, and now I'm going to fold it down into a triangle. So take one corner and fold it down into a triangle. I like to make really good creases, because I think it makes the origami a bit stronger. So now that I have a triangle on top, I'm going to cut off this bottom part. Now, if you don't have scissors, you can fold it back and forth, back and forth until it's really easy to rip off. So you, I usually do that myself, but for the video, it takes too long. So I'm just gonna cut off this bottom part. Now, the remainder paper, I also like to make origami frogs from it, so I will also fold it into a triangle. 
and cut off the bottom part. And that is what makes my little frogs that actually hop even better. So I love to keep the scratch paper in the big triangle. So now I have my origami square. This, this actually is the first fold of an origami frog, which is an extra bonus when you're starting from a regular piece of paper. So my second fold is to actually create an X down the middle. So I'm going to take the corners that haven't been folded and fold them in half, making a good crease. Open it back up and you'll see it's an X down the middle of the square. Now my third fold is to actually fold it in half this way. So I'm going to fold it down the middle. Make a good crease. And you'll see there's three triangles. Now the next part is a bit more complicated. I'm going to leave it in this fold, but I want this triangle to be the only thing I see. I'm going to take this triangle and this triangle, and I'm going to fold them behind this triangle. So how I do that is I take this crease right here that I just made, and I bend it backwards. So I like to take my other hand and kind of help with that process as I fold it behind the bigger triangle. So take this side, bend that crease the opposite direction, bring my hand behind to help with it. And then I am left with a triangle. Now, this paper kind of has two triangles on it, a front triangle and a back triangle. I'm going to do different folds on the front triangle than I am going to do on the back triangle. My front triangle, I'm going to create a diamond, a square diamond by bringing this corner up to this tip. So bringing this corner up here. To this tip. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Then create a crease down here. And you notice my back triangle, I haven't folded it at all yet. It's going to, that's coming later. So I'm going to bring this side, bring the corner up to this top corner to join it. So bring it up and then create the crease. And then you'll see you have a lovely square diamond and the back triangle as well. This square diamond is going to be your frog's head and this tip right here is going to be your frog's nose. So now we have our frog head. We need to make our frog legs on the back triangle. So instead of bringing this corner up to the top, instead I'm going to bring this whole side to the middle of the triangle, like that. And the tip is actually going to go to the bottom this time. So I'm going to bring all of it down into the middle. and create a nice crease. You'll see the diamond behind it. So I have this creased down in the middle and I'm going to bring this part to join it like that. So taking the outside part and bring it down. So, let's go ahead and fold it down the middle. I'm 
and it kind of looks like a teepee opening. Now, I want my frog's toes to point out like a regular frog. So, I'm going to open halfway the fold that I just made. So it kind of looks like an open flap of a teepee. So take the toe and fold everything back halfway. So you have your open teepee flat and the toe is pointed out. Now I want to do the same on the other side. So I want the toe pointed out and everything to be folded halfway. So it looks like an open TV door. So now I have my frog legs and I have my frog head. So the legs and the head. Now staying on the side I just folded, in order to make my frog hop, I need to fold this in half, where my toes literally go above the nose. So right here where this finger is, I need to fold it in half up. So I bring the toes above my nose, like so. Yeah, the nose is in the middle and the toes are on the side. Now, of course, a frog can't hop with its toes above its nose. So after you've done a really good crease here, because this is where you're going to need a lot of hopping power, I'm going to bring it back down halfway. So halfway down from where I folded it up. Right there. I'm going to bring it down to create my spring that allows my frog to hop. And also, it just needs its toes behind its nose, you know? So nose, toes. If you look on the back of your frog, you'll see how the spring works. So now I have my lovely hopping origami frog and make it hop. I can put it in the middle of my hand with my finger in the middle, pressing down and then it hops. I like to experiment and see how far it can go. And if I can make some that go even further, um, sometimes with friends, I'll, we'll compete to see who can make the hopping frog that goes the furthest. But yeah, that is how I like to make origami frogs. Thanks for joining me today and have a lot of fun. Bye.